Hi, we're out on our range today, and once again, we're talking about 38 Special, 357 Magnum, and 38 Super Auto. We have compared and contrasted and discussed these calibers ad nauseum, but there's one aspect that we have not discussed, and that is their interchangeability. Now, we know that 38 Special and 357 Magnum are what we call one-way interchangeable. You can put 38 Special ammo into a 357 Magnum revolver. You can't put 357 ammo into a 38 Special revolver. But where, if at all, does 38 Super Auto fall into that? Recently, some people have contacted me and asked me questions like, can you put 38 Super Ammo into a 38 Special or 357 revolver? If it does fit, will you need moon clips? If it does fit, would it be safe to shoot in those revolvers? And today we'll try to shed some light on those questions and maybe a couple of others. And we'll start with a close-up of what the different calibers look like. But this comes with a caveat. Even if you've seen these before, please don't fast forward this segment. Please watch it in its entirety. Let's take a look. Looking from your left to right, we see 25 ACP, 32 ACP, 380 ACP, 9x19, 38 Special, 38 Super Auto, 357 Magnum, 30 Carbine, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, and 45 Colt. Now, if you look at our three main cartridges that we're talking about today, you can see that the 38 Special is a little bit shorter than the 357 Magnum, and both are significantly longer than the 38 Super Auto. But what we're really seeing in this display is the main difference between what would traditionally be a revolver cartridge versus what would traditionally be an autoloader cartridge, and that is the rim. On a traditional revolver cartridge like this 38 Special, you can see a prominent rim. You see the same thing on the 357 Magnum. On the 45 Colt, the rim isn't as big, but it's definitely there. As we're on the 45 ACP, the rim is recessed. It does not stick out past the side of the casing. We see the same thing on the 40 Smith & Wesson and the 9x19. However, some auto-loading cartridges, especially your old-school auto-loading cartridges, are sometimes what we call semi-rimmed. If you look at the 38 Super Auto, you can see that the rim isn't as recessed as much as the others. It sticks out past the side of the casing just a little bit. It's semi-rimmed. You see a similar feature on 32 ACP and 25 ACP. And the fact that 38 Super Auto is semi-rimmed is going to become significant in just a few minutes. So I've got a few revolvers in caliber 38 Special and 357 Magnum, and I have a few different types of 38 Super Automatic ammunition. And there's two big questions that we have to test right now. One, will 38 Super fit into a 38 Special and 357 Magnum revolver? And two, if it does fit, is its recessed rim enough to keep the cartridge from falling too far into the chamber? Is its recessed rim enough that the ejectors of these revolvers can push that cartridge out. Okay, so there's two main things here, and we have to go about it in an order that you might think is backwards, but it's really the way we have to do it. Now, it's kind of a misconception to say that when you drop a revolver cartridge into the revolver cylinder, that it's the rim that keeps it from going too far into the chamber. That's correct sometimes with some cartridges and some revolvers, but typically it's not correct. For example, this is a Ruger Blackhawk in caliber 30 carbine. 30 carbine has a recessed rim, but if I put this cartridge into this chamber, it falls perfectly to the right depth. That's not because the rim stopped it from falling in there, it's because the shape of the cartridge in conjunction with the shape of the chamber makes it fall to the right depth. If I take this revolver, this is a Ruger LCR in caliber 9x19, and I put 9mm ammunition in it, those rounds fall to the perfect depth because of the shape of the cartridge in conjunction with the shape of the chamber, not because of the rim. It's a recessed rim. However, the real problem with the recessed rimmed cartridges in revolvers is the ejector has no rim to grip to push it out. You have to dump them out. This is why revolvers like this typically use moon clips. Now, a moon clip can act as a de facto speed loader, and that's pretty cool, but its real purpose 
is to allow the ejector to push on the moon clip to get those cartridges out. So you can put what would typically be auto-loading cartridges into a revolver. Now, of course, the Blackhawk does not use moon clips because its ejector rod that just pushes out through the center of the cartridge is not dependent on any rim. So if we were to put 38 Super Ammo into our 357 or 38 Special Revolvers, we know that 38 Super is shorter than 38 Special or 357, so it would need a rim to keep it from falling too far into the chamber. And is there going to be enough rim with the 38 Super's recessed rim to allow the ejector to work correctly? Okay, well, we'll put that to the test, but whether or not any of that happens is going to be dependent on will the ammunition even fit into our revolvers? Now remember the projectile diameter for 38 Special and 357 Magnum is 357. 38 Super typically has a projectile diameter of 355, so two thousandths less, so it should fit, but that's not the only factor. There's some factors of the, the diameter of the casing as well. So we're going to put this to the test, and to do so I have some different revolvers. I have a Smith & Wesson Model 686-6 357 Magnum, Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum, Ruger SP-101 357 Magnum, Smith & Wesson Model 638 38 Special, Smith & Wesson Model 36 38 Special, Smith & Wesson Model 15 38 Special. So we have different manufacturers, different makes. We also have different generations of firearms here. This 686 is relatively new. I think I've had it for a couple of years. This Model 15 is over 50 years old. So different makes, different models, different generations. So let's see if our 38 Super Ammo fits. And I'll start with Remington Green and White Box 38 Super 130 grain full metal jacket on those. Now, normally I'd like to do this and load these things without looking with this many different revolvers. I'm going to have to just look at them. And what we see here is that the 38 Super Ammo, even though it has a smaller projectile diameter, those cartridges just don't fit. And I'm using two just in case there's any idiosyncrasies in chambers or cartridges. In our Security 6, they don't fit. SB-101, don't fit. 638, doesn't fit. Model 36, doesn't fit. Model 15, doesn't fit. Yes, I know this is tedious, but it'll come to a point. Okay, so all that about the rim being the right the right diameter and whether or not the ammunition will fit and the whole thing about the rim working with the ejector rod seems to be a moot point because 38 Super Ammo does not fit into 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolvers. Or does it? Here's Winchester White Box. 38 Super Auto, 130 grain, full metal jacket projectile. Let's try this. Fits just fine. And the ejector pushes them out just fine. What about our security six? Fits just fine. The rim's working just fine to keep it from falling too far into the chamber. And the ejector seems to hit the rim just fine. Huh. Works just fine again. How about our 38 special? Works just fine. Works just fine. Works just fine. So, does 38 Super fit into the chamber of a 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolver? No, but yes. Now let's try another type of ammo. Now, this is still Winchester ammo, but it's Winchester Silvertip. 
38 Super 125 grain jacket hollow point. Now, you know, those fit, they fit quite a bit tighter than the Winchester white box did. But in the Security 6, they fit just fine. The SB-101 doesn't fit at all. So the Security 6 and the SP-101 are both 357 Magnum, but our Winchester Silver Tip fits in one but not the other. The model 638 fits just fine. The model 36 fits just fine. The model 15 fits just fine. So, again, does 38 Super fit into a 38 Special 357 Magnum revolver? The answer would appear to be yes, no, and maybe. Let's try another type of ammo. Now, this is Federal American Eagle 38 Super. Does not fit, not even close. Does not fit, not even close. Not even close. Not even close. Well, closer, but still, does not fit. does not fit. Okay. Try one more type of ammo. This Corbon 38 Super. Fits just fine. Ejector works just fine. Fits just fine. Ejector works fine too. It. it seemed to have just a little trouble chambering. Mm -hmm. Fits. Fits just fine. Fits just fine. and fits just fine. So, if you can get the 38 Super Ammunition to fit in your 38 Special or 357 Magnum revolver, the rim is going to work to keep it from falling too far into the chamber, and the rim is going to be sufficient for the ejector to eject it. But, does it fit? Yes, no, maybe, depending on your gun and ammunition choices. Now, there's an interesting thing here, and it's a side note, but I think it's an important side note. There are certain people within a faction that I like to call the fake experts, and they will pick up one gun, one type of ammo, doesn't work, and they will declare that, no, 38 Super does not fit into a 357 Magnum. And, obviously, they're partially right. There are other people that will pick up a different gun and a different type of ammo and declare, yes, 38 Super does fit into a 357 Magnum. And again, partially right. And it's a thing in math that when you're 50% right, you're 100% wrong. And this is why fake experts will have one gun that they test one thing with and make this declaration that yes, they all work that way. And no, the world doesn't work that way. 
as we see, different types of ammo and different types of guns, sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. And that's why good science is verifiable, falsifiable, and repeatable. You've got to try different things with different types of guns and ammo. Now, this does bring up the question, why did some fit and others didn't? Because there are slight, slight differences in ammunition that's made by one manufacturer or another manufacturer, guns made by one manufacturer, another manufacturer, different models of guns. And so some of these may be off by three, two, even one thousandth, and sometimes that'll make a difference. But the real bottom line here is, with the right combination of gun and ammo, 38 Super will fit in your 38 Special with 357 Magnum revolver. With the wrong combination, it won't. But that brings up the question, just because you can put it in there, should you? That's a really big question. Let me show you something. I have my chronograph set up at seven yards and I have my Smith & Wesson Model 15 with a four inch barrel loaded with Remington green and white box 38 special plus P 125 grain semi-jacketed hollow point. Let's see what kind of velocities I get. 893. 892 and again 892 when you get the same reading twice in a row it's indicative of malfunction so we'll throw out one of those 837 now let's see how that compares to 357 magnum now I have my Ruger Security 6 with a 4-inch barrel loaded with Remington Green and White Box 357 Magnum 125 grain semi-jacketed soft point. 1472. 1452. 1429. 1405, 1420, and 1443. Now let's see how either of those compare to 38 Super Auto. Now I have my Colt government model. And yes, some people will say that it's not fair to compare an auto loader to a revolver, but bear with me for a few. And I'm loaded with Remington Green and White Box 38 Super Auto Plus P 130 grain full metal jacket brown nose. 1177. 1135. 1124. 1180 and 1136. Now let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. And of course it comes with the normal caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like elevation and ambient temperature can affect chronograph results. But the results I got were with the 357 Magnum, a mean velocity of 1,436, with the 38 Super Auto, 1,153, with the 38 Special, 872. And this shows us a couple of things that aren't particularly surprising. One, 357 Magnum is a lot more powerful than 38 Super Auto. It had a velocity of 283 feet per second more. Two, it shows us that 38 Super Auto is a lot more powerful than 38 Special. It had a velocity of 281 feet per second more. So a difference of 281, a difference of 283, puts it right about in the middle. Granted, it does have a slightly different bullet weight. And not only did we get 
281 feet per second more than we got with the 38 Special, we achieved that with a slightly heavier bullet, 130 grain as opposed to 125 grain, which is only five grains more, but still that's more. So if you were to ask me the question, would I load my 38 Special revolver with 38 Super Auto ammunition? I guess if it were some kind of Mad Max fantasy and you were battling for your life against a bunch of guys with mohawks and shoulder pads, then maybe I would. However, my shooting stance might change. Instead of a shooting stance that looks like this, it might look something like this. But on the other side of that, the question, would I load my 357 Magnum revolver with 38 Super Auto ammo? Okay, that's something at least I'm willing to try. Let's go back to the chronograph. Now I have my Colt government model loaded with Winchester White Box 38 Super Auto Plus P 130 grain full metal jacket flat nose. Eleven fifty seven. Eleven sixty. Eleven sixty seven. 1189 and 1161. Now I have my Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum with a 4 inch barrel loaded with Winchester White Box 38 Super Auto plus P 130 grain full metal jacket flat nose. Let's see what kind of velocities I get now. 1125. 1134 11:40 11:29 11:22 and 11:30 Also did you notice those were very easy to eject so let's go crunch those numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers, and with our Winchester White Box 38 Super Auto ammunition fired from the Colt government model, we got a mean velocity of 1,166. With that ammunition fired from the Ruger Security 6, we got a mean velocity of 1,130. 36 feet per second less. If we're losing any velocity because of the gap between the cylinder and the forcing cone, it's not much. But when you're trying to shoot 38 Super Auto out of a 357 Magnum revolver, how is that going to affect your accuracy? Let's go to the target and see if we can answer that. Now I have my Smith & Wesson Model 686-6 loaded with our Remington Green & White Box 357 Magnum 125 grain semi-jacket at soft point. That's the ammo I used to zero this revolver. And I'll go back 20 yards and I'll shoot the target on your left with this ammunition. Then I'll reload with our Winchester White Box 38 Super Ammo, shoot the target on your right, and we'll see how the groups compare for size and location. Now our target shows us a couple of things. First, with our 357 ammo, you see one shot that's high, that's a flyer, that's just me. The instant I pulled the trigger, I knew that was going to be off. But other than that, we see that we have a pretty good group, pretty well centered, because that's the ammunition I used to zero this revolver. Now when we look at our other target with the 38 Super ammunition, we see what might be a little bit of a shift of point of impact, but it's only a little bit of a shift. However, that's only with this revolver. Different firearms might have a different degree of shift, and it might be in a different direction. 
But what we really see here is what I would call no significant loss of accuracy. Now a couple more things to add. First, we've spent a lot of our time today discussing can you put 38 Super Auto ammunition into revolvers chambered for 38 Special or 357 Magnum? We have not discussed can you put 357 Magnum or 38 Special ammunition into an auto loading pistol chambered for 38 Super Auto? And the answer is no, you can't. Those cartridges are far too long. They're not going to fit the 38 Super chamber. But that brings up the question can you put 38 Super Auto ammunition into an auto loading pistol chambered for 9x19? Again, the answer is no. 38 Super Auto cartridge is too long. It's not going to fit the 9x19 chamber. I'm sure I will be contacted by somebody who will tell me all about how their grandma's aunt used to babysit a kid who could do that, but you really can't. But that brings up the question, can you put 38 Super Auto ammunition into something like this LCR, a revolver chambered for 9x19? The cylinder looks like it would be long enough to accommodate 38 Super Auto ammunition, but the chambers are not cut that way you can't put 38 Super Auto ammunition into this revolver. Now the second thing I want to add is, while shooting the paper target with the 357 Magnum revolver loaded with the 38 Super Auto ammunition, you may have heard the click where I pulled the trigger and the revolver didn't go off. We had a light primer strike. Now was that because that particular cartridge was defective? Or are light primer strikes something that's likely to happen depending on your combination of 38 Super Auto ammo and 357 Magnum revolver? I don't know, but that being a possibility is something to consider. But the real bottom line of everything we've done today comes down to two questions. Can you and should you? Now we've seen that with the wrong combination of revolver and 38 Super Auto ammo, no, you can't. But with the right combination of 38 or 357 Magnum revolver and the right combo of 38 Super Auto ammo, yes, you can. But that brings us to the question, should you? Okay, you ever see one of those big paper hornet's nests and it has a hole in there where the hornets come and go? You can stick any one of many appendages in there, but should you? I'm going to go with no. And that's the exact way I'm going to look at putting 38 Super Ammo into a 38 Special Revolver. Can you do it? Yes. Should you? No. But putting 38 Super Ammo into a 357 Magnum Revolver, yes, you can do it. And I did it here today for the purposes of demonstration. But I do not see myself doing that in the future for any reason other than demonstration. And I probably won't even do it for that. Should you do that, you be the judge. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the 38 Super Auto Ammunition into your 38 Special or 357 Magnum Revolver video.